Hello there, welcome back to The Groomsman. I'll be your host, Jonathan. Today I'm using Vita After Dark by Ariana and Evans. This is in their VR1, their vegan base. Um, they had another vegan base, uh, they called it a vegan butter. Uh, it was like, I don't think they have it out anymore. It was a limited release, so it was only like three or four cents. Then they came out with this, uh, I think just in this one scent. Uh, they're kind of testing out the vegan base thing and seeing if, you know, if it was popular and uh, I think he's still trying to experiment with it. Um, but this is, like I said, all vegan, no tallow, uh, coconut butter, shea butter, glycerin, castor oil, rice milk, sunflower oil, palm oil, avocado oil, cocoa butter, jojoba, coconut, colloidal oatmeal, agave, aloe, uh, hyaluronic acid, and slippery elm. Uh, this is kind of a dark, boozy scent here. It's got tequila in there and agave, some citrus notes in the front. They're not really, it's not really bright citrus in front, actually. The citrus is kind of buried underneath that kind of tequila scent that's got going on. So it's kind of a boozy scent. And then it's got some some woody um, notes in the background, some sandalwood and some, um, oh, there's like two other woods that I'm forgetting what they are right now. And some dirty, uh, some vetiver, kind of a dirty vetiver. I like it. The, the original Vita is very bright, kind of grapefruit, very bright citrus forward. Which I also like as well, but this is, you know, that vetiver and the and the tequila really changed the profile. It's kind of a dirty, boozy scent. I like it. Um, got it all lathered up here with my that darn Rob maple brush, which I dig. The base is pretty cool. I've only used this I think once or twice before. Uh, the lather's a little bit more. Um, the, the regular like A and E, like Kaizen, Kaizen two two E bases are uh, more, they're not quite, they're more dense, not quite as fluffy. Uh, this is a little bit fluffier than the, than the regular base, but not like too fluffy, it's not airy, I don't have any bubbles. Um, really shiny, very, very nice. I think it's gonna be a pretty shave. I am, I decided to use this today because he's working on a VR2 base. Uh, it's still on his continuing quest, you know, to always better himself and his products. and. Uh, he had uh, some testers ready to go out that he posted about in the club, and I had a shopping cart full of stuff that I was getting ready to purchase anyways for my upcoming celebration for my birthday. And uh, I like to buy myself something. It gives me an excuse to spend money on myself, because sometimes I don't. Um, <laughs> you would know that by how much shaving stuff I have, though. Anyway, so he was talking about having this uh, this VR2 base, some testers going out for, you know, the next X amount of orders, so he ran out of the, the test bucks that he made. And I was like, well, I needed an excuse to go buy some stuff, so there it was, and so I, I bought it, put the order in, and then like the next day, it hadn't shipped yet, and uh, he was talking about how he was gonna restock some more of his bath bars, the, the Ultima base, um, the new bath bars that he's been working on, body and shampoo bars, I think is what they're called. And I wanted some because I had one of his original bath bars and I liked it. Um, soap, it soap of Antiquity, uh, kind of an olive oil base. And he changed the formula, kind of bumped it up a little bit. And so I was excited to try it and he released it scented. So it was in Barbary, the new barber shop scent that he's got, uh, Classico, I think. And then the uh, Lavender Noir. So I, I emailed the customer service while I asked Peter on the Facebook page, on the, the club Facebook page first, and then he told me to hit up customer service. And I asked if they could just sit on my order for the rest of the week, because those soap bars were coming out on Friday. I was like, do you mind just sitting on it for the week and not shipping it? And then, you know, I can add on a couple of those soap bars. That would be great. That way I don't have to pay for two separate packages or, or just not get the soap bars. And uh, they were very, very awesome about it. Had no problems. I uh, sat on it for the week and then it shipped out this this early this week um, So should have everything in there. I'm excited. I, mean, I don't have a guarantee that I got a VR2 soap puck to try out I'm just I placed it right after you ordered or right after he posted about it. So I'm hopeful um, So I wanted to get the VR1 base have like a fresh use and then I could try the VR2 base and have like a good comparison um, outside of his regular, you know, tallow based soaps for the shave today we're gonna do the face off the overlander uh, this is code is the brass version, but uh, played in 24 karat gold. I did this. At, uh, I bought it at RE and had it plated there as well before they shipped it. And then this is the Aylesworth copper cant. Uh, this is the plus plate. There's like a little tiny plus here on the corner, which you probably can't see. Yeah, just a little bit. There's one on each side. A tiny little plus. 
So this is the, the positive exposure. So these both have positive exposure, but not a whole lot. Um, I don't remember the blade gaps. Looking at it, I'd say the Aylesworth might have a slightly larger blade gap. But we're gonna see. I'll post the, the info down on the bottom in the, in the description. Um, hopefully I don't forget to do that. <laughs> we'll shave half on each side of the face. Um, I got a new, brand new, first use. What I got in here? Gillette, seven o'clock, super platinums, the blacks. If you can see, I got my strop making noise over here. I hung up my strop on this little door jam here, my little doorknob. I, uh, I'm gonna start trying straight razors, so that's something to look out for too, if you guys are interested in straights or interested in seeing me butcher my face on camera. Uh, I'll probably be doing that here on my next shave. Probably wait a couple days. And then, uh, yeah, I'll try it all straight for the first time. So the Overlander, 24 karat gold on the right side of the face. I'm a big fan of the Overlander. I heard a uh, lots of reviews before I bought it. And then I kind of, not having used it myself yet, I didn't even get a chance to try it out. I decided why not get a completed option. I was using a discount code when I bought it anyways, and that applied towards the services there on, on RE, so worked out. I ended up really liking the razor. I do really dig the, the gold. It's classy. Stay classy, San Diego. I had a uh, two days growth. My last shave was the last video I posted, the, the Copper Camp Plus, which is the first use with that on Monday. And no, on Tuesday. And today's Thursday. So that's a pretty good pass. I do like these uh, seven o'clock black. I've been using them almost, or not even almost. I've been using them exclusively for the last few weeks. And uh, not had a disappointing shape yet. So blade feel on the width of grain. There's not a lot. They're both positive, but it's not a lot. I might give the edge to the copper cant and blade feel, not so that's like a metric for how I'm gonna decide the winner, but. I think it's got a yes, just a little bit more blade feel. Still super comfortable. I kind of have an idea how this shave is going to go, but I'm going to, I do get surprised sometimes. I don't know why I didn't shave half my chin with each, so I'm kind of catching up there. I would say the, the copper can has a, a hair more blade feel, just a touch. And on that pass, um, the copper can felt smoother. Not a lot, just enough to notice. So far that soap is really nice. Still plenty of slickness left. Also I didn't have any issues with the soap breaking down or anything. I mean the VR1 base is not new. I'm not like, this is not a first review. I'm sure other people have used this on out there and done reviews on it and stuff. I think I bought this off the buy sell trade page. Or I traded for it, I can't remember which. All right, back to the Overlander. Cross the grain. I do notice these Schick blades. I keep calling them Schick blades. These Gillette blades, these seven o'clock blacks. Uh, they do smooth out. After the first, not that they're bad or rough or anything on the first pass. 
but they get even smoother on the second pass. And I know what you're saying. You're saying maybe it's because you have less hair on your face. Maybe. But I don't think so. That probably plays a factor, but it just gets smoother. Some blades are like that if you look at like some sharpness tests and stuff that were done. Um, some blades will actually get sharper after the first use. Kind of the natural strapping action. Sometimes it's because of uh, removing, removal of the coating that's on there. But usually it's kind of the, the natural sharpening action of, of running this face across your bristles, the face, the razor across your face and the bristles. Dropping action. You know, like a little red mark here is where I nicked myself on my last shave. Hopefully, I don't open it back up again. It was just a little nick. Second pass was kind of like the first. Uh, I felt a little bit more blade with the copper cant. Um, feels a little bit more efficient though. That might just be in my head because it feels more blade feel. I mean, it feels pretty equal. As far as like what's remaining. As far as those straight razors, I got uh, I got two to try out. I've had a few vintage straights for a while now. Um, I picked up a couple just because they look cool at like an antique store. Um, couple I got because I bought like a lot worth of shaving stuff that had like brushes and mugs and some DEs and whatnot and a couple straights were in there. Some of them are crap. I have a couple that like one has like half the blade broken off. I don't know why I still even have it. Um, one where the blade itself is fine but the scales are destroyed. They use like hammered like some kind of like aluminum over the, the tip of the, the scales to kind of keep them from falling apart. I mean, it worked, but it looks ugly. <laughs> but the blade itself is still fine. So if I wanted to hone it back up, I could. And so these are just kind of mostly incidental finds. Um, and then one that I won in a raffle, it was a, a benefit raffle on, I think it's called a Shave Chapel on Facebook. Like a buy, sell, trade page, and they do some other stuff. But they were doing a, uh, a benefit raffle for somebody. They, they do them pretty often. You know, somebody's in need, some, you know, cat, cause, but something bad happened to like a family someone passed away or so they're trying to raise money for the survivors the family members and whatnot uh, or maybe I think there was one going on right now or somebody was having some medical issues so they were raising some money to help with bills and whatnot anyways so there was one of those and I, I uh, gave to the the benefit raffle. I think obviously bought a couple spots in the raffle, so I ended up winning a straight razor, a red imp, a vintage. I think it's a number 66. I'll show it to you in a second. I got that nick right here. I'm trying not to catch it. I always hate going against the grain on this spot on my chin. It's always kind of get that rounded part.
That was pretty smooth. The uh, copper can't. What was I talking about a minute ago? Straight razor. So I got that that red amp from that benefit. Uh, and then, so I, I decided I wanted to try it. I wanted to, and I've got a, a strop that I, you know, I think I was shot off a second ago. Um, they got that off of a lot as well when I find a bunch of shit and stuff and they had this cool strap. This is a, a Hofritz from Germany, but then it also has a emblazon about Russia on here. I don't know. Look cool. I don't know how old it is. Works though. Um, but I decided to send a couple razors out to get professionally honed because I thought I'd instead of spending a bunch of money trying to get stones and figure out how to use them and maybe wreck a blade in the process. I would just, you know, get someone that knows what they're doing, put an actual edge on there that's trustworthy, and then try to do a shave and see how it works out. Or two or three or whatever. And then, assuming I like it, and then I start using straights more often, then maybe in the future I'll buy some stones and stuff. And, So I sent these two razors out. I, I kind of made a couple posts on Facebook asking for recommendations for where to send straight razors to. And I got a few small businesses and some individual recommendations. I ended up uh, Nicholas Badamba. I, I don't think I said his last name right. We've done a few trades on Facebook before. Um, so he recognized my name and I recognized his name and he reached out and was like, and I've seen his, he has a huge straight razor collection. I don't know about what's huge, but he's got some awesome straight razors in his shave of the day post. Yeah, I cut myself right there. So he reached out and offered to do one for me for a very, what I felt was a reasonable price. I haven't shopped around a lot. So I sent him off the, uh, the weight and butcher I got. And then I had a couple recommendations from Arthur Knowles, who runs Azalea City Suds. And he's the moderator and creator of the Ace of Shaves Facebook group. He sent me a couple recommendations and one of them reached out. And so we were having a chat. And this was after I already decided to send that one out to Nicholas. And he was like, well, I'll do one. He's like, I'm looking to, you know, have some more opportunities to practice and kind of hone his skills. And he's thinking about offering out his services, but he wanted to have some more practice and some more reviews, kind of feedback. Super nice guy. So I sent him out the red imp. And uh, I got both of them back this week. He'll send me this really cool letter. I'll probably show it off when I do the straight razor video. I think I'm gonna use the red M first. Uh, we talked about how we use the different stones, uh, the, the honing that he did on there, you know, 1K, uh, he used synthetic stones. 1K, 5K, 8K, and 12K, and then finish it on a J net to make the edge super smooth. Strop sterilized, has a light coat of oil. I'm not gonna go into the whole thing. And they gave me some instructions for stropping because you know I'm new with that stuff. So I did practice strop a razor last night. Uh, a different razor that's not been honed professionally. Uh, just one of my other vintage razors, uh, Jay Henkels, I think. Uh, just to practice kind of stropping. I was impressed because I checked it out before. I stropped it and it wouldn't even like pop hairs on my arm or nothing. And then I stropped it per his recommendation on the linen side and the leather side. And then it was like shaving hairs on my arms. And I was like, wow, that was pretty impressive. As far as the shape goes, I know I sorry, got a little long winded there. Haven't done any touch ups yet. Definitely could use a couple on my chin or on my neck. I'm gonna go with the copper can. Uh, a little bit more efficient. I still got a little hair left here. Nothing I can't get with a touch up pass, but it's it's definitely more efficient. And I feel like it was a little bit smoother. I don't know why it was a little bit smoother, um, but it was. The, the angle's a little bit different, obviously the uh, Overlander has more of a bend of the razor, so that, that that DE blade is flexed down at a nice angle, which, you know, but the Aylesworth is more of a flat. Obviously, there's still a slight bend to it, but it's not as drastic of a bend as it is on the Overlander. 
So the angle's different. The Overlander is more of a standard 30 degree shave. This one has kind of got that, not fixed angle, but it's kind of got that suggested angle kind of built into the geometry of the head there. So it's a little steeper. You're holding your handle a little bit closer to your face. Um, I don't find that hard to find. I don't like search for it. And you, know, you just kind of like, when you're normally shaving, you're the, you know, if you're using a bunch of different razors, it's like that for any different razor, it's gonna be a slightly different angle. And I think you just naturally kind of rotate a little bit until you figure it out and then it's there. And it's intuitive and it's not difficult to maintain. Um, yeah, the Copper Camp Plus Plate wins it for me. Plus Plate for the win. I'm gonna do a couple touch-ups here. I do, obviously I need touch-ups on both sides of my neck, but I need less on my Copper Camp side than on my Overlander side. Um, so yeah, Copper Camp gets the win. I'm gonna do some quick touch-ups real quick and a cold water splash, and I'll be back for a post-shave and my final rambling thoughts. All right, I'm back. Thanks for sticking with me. I got the matching uh, Avita After Dark splash to match that VR1 soap base. It was a nice base. I like it. Uh, I think it's, I like it a little less than uh, K2E. I'll just compare it to that one since that's the current uh, Kaizen base it's out. Um, I think Kaizen 2E is a little bit slicker. Um, it's a little lower structured, so it's not as fluffy, which I kind of like that in a shaving soap. I like a very dense, low structure. You know, I don't like the big fluffy faithful lather. I like it very slick and dense. Um, and it's not bad on that. Um, still a very good soap. Very, I probably compare it to, my, my favorite vegan soap that I use most of the time is Southern Witchcrafts. Um, I like that vegan base more than the PAA. Some people might not like that. That's my opinion. Um, I think Southern Witchcraft makes an excellent vegan based soap if you're interested in that kind of stuff. I think this is right there with that. Really, really close. I think the Southern Witchcraft might be a little bit slicker. Uh, maybe a little bit more dense. Man, I love the K2E splash. I really do. This stuff is just so good. I do like the scent. The, the, brightness of the citrus and the, the kind of sweetness of that, the agave, and there's a couple of citrus notes in there. A little bit of like lemony, kind of grapefruity. I don't think there's grapefruit in there, but something like that. Kind of like a, a citrus, a little tart, a little sweet. Smells really nice. The tequila and the vetiver is still there, but it's not. It seems like the vetiver note and the tequila note are more upfront and present in the soap and not as present in the splash, or at least not in the initial splash. Maybe it comes out and dry down a little bit. Still there. There's still a little bit of that vetiver. It's nice. It's a really nice scent. I actually like it a lot more now. When I first got it, I was like, ooh, I don't know about that scent. It's a little... I had Vita, and it was, you know, I had its idea in my head of what Vita is in a very, very sweet citrus scent. Um, so I thought it would be more along those lines. I mean, obviously it was after dark, and they're turning it on its head a little bit, but the it works out really well. Did a really good job with this scent, if you ever watched this video. Probably not. I, I dig it. It's very nice. So I got the splash. Hopefully I get that VR2 uh, sample in this Vita. It's coming in the Vita After Dark scent as well. Um, so I'll have the splash to use again with that, hopefully here in the near future. Um, that shade was excellent. I do really like that Copper Camp Plus plate. I got one little nick here from the Overlander, not the Overlander's fault. I'd already nicked myself there earlier in the week. It's just not all the way healed up. The little small weeper there that closed up, I did the cold water splash. Other than that, super smooth, super fun to use. I think I could use it every day. I don't think I'd have a problem using it as a daily driver, that plus plate. Um, obviously it's a little bit premature because I haven't actually used it as a daily driver yet. I used it and then didn't shave for two days and then used it again. But I don't think I would have an issue uh, being a daily driver, but stay tuned, I'll probably use it more often here in the near future. So, But that was the winner. The, the Copper Cant plus plate in brass. Uh, I, I enjoy the shave a little bit more than the Overlander. It's a little bit smoother, a little bit more efficient. Uh, had a little bit more blade feel, but it was more comfortable for some reason. Even with that blade feel, and I don't know if it had, I think I think it has to do with the angle of the blade somehow. Um, I would, ex I, intellectually, I would have expected this blade angle to be a little bit smoother, but it turned out this one was a little smoother. Uh, go figure. Uh, I dig it. Did a really good job out there, Aylesworth. I really dig your design. I dig the handle. I like the brass. I'm not sure if I'll do anything with this. I thought about polishing it up, doing a high brass polish or maybe plating it. I was thinking rhodium. Rhodium kind of popped into my head yesterday. I was thinking about this. It might look sweet. We'll see. I'm in no hurry. That was a shave. 
Oh, I did say I'd let you look at the razor, the straight razor. I'm probably gonna use this one first. The the red imp that I got in the, the benefit raffle, all freshly honed and stropped, not by me. <laughs> uh, number 133, and you can see that there on the bottom of the razor. Uh, won that from that benefit raffle. And I'm excited to use this Robert Burrow, I believe. I'll post his info in the bottom, uh, especially when I do the actual straight razor shave. Um, so if anyone else decides they want to or they're looking for someone, uh, I'll let you know how his razor works out. So expect that probably this weekend. So I'm going to wait till I have a couple days growth again and then go at it with that straight razor. At least my cheeks. That's the recommendation. Cheeks first and kind of work on practicing that before you start working on your neck. I'll see how it goes. I'll play it by you. Maybe I'll do the whole thing and just cut myself to ribbons. But I'll see you here next time for it.